Okay, so we are going to talk about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect in the case where the source is moving toward the observer. Okay, and we want to find the equation uh, for the frequency that this observer will hear because the source is moving toward um, him or her. Okay, so let's start thinking about a source that is not moving. And then we'll compare it with a source that is moving. Okay, so let's make this comparison. Let's start on the left side with the sort that is not moving. Okay, so at a certain time that I'll call time zero, I'm going to take snapshots of the crest of the sound that is being emitted by the source. And let me assume that at time t zero, there is a crest here very close to, to the source. Well, this specific crest is moving, now this energy right there is going to be propagating to the right. And so at a time later, a period later, that crest will be somewhere here, okay? And now it's a period later, so there'll be a new crest um, being uh, emitted from that source. Well, and what is the distance between the two? As we know, it is the wavelength. Let's put this in black. All right, now let's compare this with the case where the source is moving. So at time zero, my source is here. There is a crest very close to it. As time passes, a period later, what is going to happen to that specific crest that we are looking at? Well, it will have moved at the speed of sound and it will be somewhere here, just as we had on the left side. What changes now is while well, the source is no longer at this point, the source will also have moved, okay? And it's appeared later, so there'll be this new crest very close to the to the source. What happened with the what did the motion of the source cause? Well, the motion of the source um, now makes changes the difference, you no, know, the, the distance between the two crests. What is now the this new distance? A certain wavelength, which I'm going to call lambda prime. How different it is? Well, it depends on how much the source has moved to the right, this, this motion of the source. What we want to know is a person here, this observer there, will hear um, the noise coming from this source, but what will be the frequency, okay? Now, let's think about the left size when the source is not moving. What is the speed of the, of the wave, no? Well, we know that the speed is just the speed of sound. We have this um, sound propagating in the air, and so it's moving with the speed of sound, which is lambda multiplied by the frequency, and the wavelength multiplied by the, by the frequency. So let's mark this equation here, which is something that we already knew, okay? Now, on the right side, what can we say about uh, the speed of this wave. Well, the speed of that wave is still the same. Once the speed is out there in the air, it's propagating the air at the speed of sound. So the speed is still the same, is the speed of sound. But what changed in this um, scenario now? Well, you see that the wavelength is no longer lambda, but now it is lambda prime. If the speed of sound does not change, and the lambda prime has changed, it has become shorter, we know for sure that the frequency will also change. Yeah? And the frequency will change so that the speed of sound remains the same. So this new um, equation here is the, still the same equation, but what has changed the wavelength and therefore the frequency. If the wavelength decreases, as we see, in our drawing, then the frequency will have to increase so that the speed of sound remains the same as it should, okay? 
What we want to find out now is what is this new uh, frequency, this F prime, what is this wavelength, this new wavelength, lambda prime. Okay, so let's start by lambda prime. So by looking at this drawing here, and that's where everything is going to come from, what do we see is that the wavelength, this new wavelength, the wavelength prime, is the original one, this one here, minus how much of the source travel, this delta x. So everything will start, will come from this equation here, okay? Using, making use of these two equations uh, that we know, okay? So everything is going to start from this one. So let's rewrite this equation uh, here again. So the new wavelength, wavelength prime is the original one minus how much of the source trap. We are assuming that this source is moving at constant speed, okay? And we are thinking about uh, things like uh, ambulances or um, planes or cars, things that move at a speed that is smaller than the speed of sound, okay? So the V of the source is smaller than the V of sound. Okay, all right. So what, how much, um, what is this displacement? Huh? How much the, did the source move? Well, how am I going to get that? Let's remember the equation for velocity, right? Which is displacement divided by the time. With this equation, we then know that how much did the, the source travel? Delta X okay, is equal to the speed of that source multiplied by the time. Now we are comparing two different times, time zero and the a period later. So this time is period, okay? So this is what we are going to put here. So then we have now the new wavelength is the old one minus V of source multiplied by the period. Okay, this is very good. This is really good. Now. The way that we want to write this equation is that is so that we have only wavelength showing up and speeds. We don't want anything else in this equation. So let's manipulate this equation a little bit so that we get what we are asking for. Okay, so well, this uh, wavelength prime, wavelength, this is all already good. V of the source. Now we want to get rid of this period here. How are we going to get rid of the period? Let's come back to these equations. Well, this equation here, yeah, we know we could write as speed of sound is the wavelength divided by the period. What does that mean? That this period can also be written as wavelength divided by V of sound, correct? And so I'm using this here. Yeah. So Coming back to our equation, instead of period here, what I'm going to put, wavelength divided by V of sound. Okay, so now I got the equation that I wanted. I'm just going to manipulate to make it look a little more elegant. Now factor things, so this uh, new wavelength is the old one, one minus V source divided by V of sound. Very good. So I arrived at the equation that I wanted where I have only wavelength and speeds showing up. Now what we want to do is we are going to continue and improve this a, a little bit so that now we want an equation for frequency. Okay, so we found an equation for wavelength. Now we want an equation for frequency that involves the new, the old and the speeds only. So how are we going to do that? We know that from um, this equation here, right? We know that the new frequency is V of sound divided by the new wavelength. So that's what I'm going to write down here. The new frequency is V of sound divided by the new wavelength. And now what I'm going to put in the place of this new wavelength is what we found before. So I can say that the new frequency is the V of sound. Now here I have wavelength 
one minus v source divided by v of sound. Very good. But I see wavelength showing up there. We don't want that. So what we want is to get rid of this um, wavelength that is showing up in the equation. Now, just by looking at this equation here, we know that this one is the frequency, correct? V of sound is wavelength and frequency. So frequency is frequency is the V of sound divided by the wavelength. All right, so then you see we got now this um, equation where we have the new frequency is the original one, one minus V source over V sound. There you are. We arrived at the equation that we wanted to obtain. Okay, very good. So we got the two equations that we wanted. Let's just uh, analyze them a little bit. As we said, the speed of the source is smaller than the speed of sound. Yes, we are thinking about things that move uh, slower than sound. So this means that this number here is smaller than one. So this whole number here is a number that is smaller than one. So then, as we said, this new wavelength decreases. Okay, let's come back now to the equation for frequency. Let's see if it makes sense. Here, this is a number that is smaller than one. We have now in the whole denominator, a number that is smaller than one. So frequency, original frequency divided by a number that is smaller than one, then implies that our new frequency indeed increases, okay? So this is when the source is moving toward the observer. What would change if instead the source would be moving away? Well, then what would happen here is instead of this delta x being to the right, it would be to the left. And in this case, then the new wavelength would be the original plus delta x. So that's the only thing that changes when the source is moving away. Wherever there was a minus sign, it would become a plus sign when the source is moving away. So everything that we derived, well, nothing much changes apart from these signs. So this is when we are moving away. And here, this plus sign is when we are moving away. And what, what happens then when we are moving away? When we are moving away, now this term in parentheses becomes larger than one, okay? So when we are moving away, the new frequency increases because it gets even further away. No? If you look at this drawing, it, we are going further from the observer. No? And then if I come to the frequency, lambda increases. And if I look at the frequency, now I have in the den denominator a number that is larger than one. So when we are moving away, our new frequency will decreases. The denominator now is larger than, and that's the story.